So if you stumbled on this video, I'm going to assume that you're trying to figure out what is sample rate. Well, sample rate is the number of snapshots or samples that is taken of a sound to represent that in the digital space. Let me explain. Let's say for instance, I am a sound and I'm trying to get into this club called the audio interface. Now the audio interface tells me in order for me to bring you into this digital space, this digital party that we're in, I need to take a certain amount of pictures of you to accurately represent what you actually look like in this particular space. So the audio interface is telling me I'm gonna take you from analog to digital. That's the only way into this club. So the club, AKA the audio interface, tells me they want to take 44,100 pictures of me in order to accurately represent me and bring me into the digital space. So the club audio interface takes 44,100 pictures. Snap, 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 snap. Now in the process of doing this, I ask them, are you sure? Because I don't wanna be missing my tip of my finger, a little bit of my eye, a piece of my eyelash. I wanna walk into that digital club and I want to look exactly like how I look in the analog space. So the club audio interface takes 44,100 pictures and brings me into the digital space. And there I live. Now let's say for instance, I wanna turn up my sample rate because I just feel like, hey, I'm in the digital space. I don't really like how you represented me. I feel like those 44,100 pictures weren't enough. I feel like I'm missing a nail. I'm missing uh, an eyelash. I feel like you didn't get all my details. So now we turn our sample rate up to 48 kilohertz and now I'm gonna get 48,000 pictures in one second. So now I'm getting quote unquote, a more accurate representation of myself in the digital space, AKA the club audio interface. So understand when it comes to sample rate, it's how many snapshots or how many times a source is sampled in order to accurately represent that in the digital space, turning it into ones and zeros. Now you may be saying to yourself, why is 44.1 kilohertz a super popular sample rate that a lot of us use? Well, to not get so technical, there's something called a Nyquist sampling theorem. And it basically says that a waveform can be perfectly reconstructed if it is sampled twice as fast as its highest frequency content. So human hearing is said to be from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So if we sample at twice as fast or take twice as many pictures, according to the Nyquist sampling theorem, we can accurately reconstruct that waveform. Thus, where we land on 44.1, being that 20 kilohertz or 22,000 kilohertz is the highest of human hearing. So basically a sample rate of 44.1, it's sampling even higher than we can hear. Now I wanna show you a quick example of how less snapshots or a lower sample rate can affect a signal. Check this out. So right here, this is a drum sequence. Obviously this is playing back at the speed of my DAW, which is 48 kilohertz. Now let's go on over here to this sample rate plugin and let's dumb down the sample rate step by step. Listen to what is affected and what is happening. Now, what did you just notice from that sample rate going down? You noticed that the higher end frequencies started to kind of disappear. It started to lose detail, fidelity, and all of those things. It was taking less pictures of that waveform, thus it wasn't accurately representing the original signal that was there. So the less that sample rate, uh, the lower the sample rate was, the more detail that you lost in the sound source. So you may be asking yourself, what sample rate should I choose? If you're using 44.1, you're fine, don't stress. I personally use 48 kilohertz for a few slight reasons. One of the main reasons I use 48 kilohertz is because I get a little bit more snapshots, but at the same time, it's not putting so much of a load on my processor. See, what you have to realize is if you wanna work at 192 kilohertz, as far as your sample rate is concerned, you are gonna be putting a lot of load on your processor. Now, if you have the power to do this from your computer, by all means, give it a shot and see how it sounds. You may also be saying to yourself, yeah, well, if I'm at 192, it's gonna sound better because it's accurately reproducing that 
that sound. You may be wrong on this one. Reason being is because every A to D, D to A converter is not made equal. Just because your audio interface claims that it can record at 192 kilohertz doesn't really mean that it can do that well. And this is what separates good converters from not so good converters. Basically, it's ability to take those snapshots and bring them into the digital space accurately. So basically, you can have a really cheap or bad audio interface with really bad converters, and that's like having a terrible photographer. With bad converters, the sampling is kind of like taking pictures with a cell phone, as opposed to with good converters, it's taking the pictures with a high quality, crazy camera. The bad converters may look a little blurry. It may not accurately represent that frequency really well, even though it took all of those pictures. Understand it like this, with the audio that I played for you guys earlier and basically bussing down the sample rate, you noticed one thing. The lower your sample rate was, the more high frequencies you kind of lost. Well, why is that? Well, see it like this. A higher frequency sound contains more cycles. They are tighter, there are more of them. Basically, when you say there are 100 hertz, that's 100 cycles of a waveform. Basically, higher frequency stuff has a lot more cycles. They're tighter. A 10,000 kilohertz frequency is 10,000 cycles. A 20 hertz frequency is 20 cycles. So at higher frequency content, you have more cycles that are constantly moving like this. And with lower end content, like 20 hertz for instance, you have a more open and more wider waveform. So if I'm an audio converter, if I have a 20 hertz wave that I'm trying to take a bunch of pictures of, it doesn't take much because essentially I'm only taking snapshots of 20 cycles of a wave. As opposed to a 17 kilohertz frequency, I have to take a picture of 17,000 waves. Now, of course, if my sample rate is lower, it's gonna be harder for me to accurately get that picture. As opposed to the 20 hertz wave, if I have to take 44,100 pictures of that, I'm gonna get that well. So that's another reason why it feels like as the sample rate gets lower, you start to lose a lot of that higher end detail or the higher frequencies within that sound source. But once again, if we're sampling at the standard of 44.1 kilohertz, you're twice the times of uh, human hearing. So you're in good shape. Just don't assume that because you have a higher sample rate, it's going to sound better. I leave the higher sample rates to the better audio interfaces. I've seen a lot of people in film and TV using the higher sample rate. Some people claim they can hear a difference, some don't. Listen to the sample rates yourself and make your decision. I'm very comfortable working in 48 kilohertz for its processing ability as far as the power that it's taking from my CPU, as well as just getting a few more snapshots. So I hope that was helpful. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Also follow us at Help Me Devon on Instagram and also visit helpmedevon.com at any time to get some of our vocal chains and templates and presets. Also, you can join our Discord community with a bunch of aspiring engineers like yourself that are trading secrets and giving game. I hope that was helpful and until next time you guys.